So Mark, here's your second system that you're using here at Arizona for growing strawberries in the greenhouse. What's this one called? Well, what this is, this is the Abedo strawberry bucket. It's the 11 liter Beto strawberry bucket. Now this is different from the traditional Beto bucket that everyone knows that um, you know, they grow tomatoes and other things in. Right. This is designed for strawberry. Um, it's designed to either hang like we have it here because it has these collars on it that allow you to hang it or it has feet and can sit right on top of a steel uh, drainage gutter um, that they would use say for even high wire crops. So it has a few different ways you can work with it to grow. So if you put this in a gutter, it's going to drain out. If you set it on a gutter, and then any drain, it just goes into the gutter and gets right. collected. So just like the slab that might sit on that gutter drains, this is going to drain right onto the gutter and, and be taken away. But in your system where you have it hanging using these little wings, you have it draining into a PVC pipe? That's right. We have to carry the, the drainage away somehow. Uh, we always want to collect that. We don't want it run on the floor. Plus, we, we measure our drainage for EC and pH and volume. So yeah, I just it has this space right here on the feet in which an inch and a half piece of PVC can fit. And I've got holes drilled underneath each of these, these drain holes that are in, in, in the bucket. So that'll collect the drainage and, and take it away. Take it back. If you want to reuse it or test it or what have you, whatever you're going to do with that. Right. So then this just sets, and you've got these little metal um, metal tubes, really. This, this is just conduit. Huh. Uh, it's heavy conduit. Um, I'm using three-quarter inch. You probably could get away with half inch, a little lighter, um, but still plenty strong to, right. to support. Now, you're about waist high here. I, I would assume a grower could bring that up higher. Right. But we're at this level because we're retrofitting a house that had other systems in it, um, and we had to, to match those up. But yeah, I would prefer it to be a little bit higher. Um, basically, chest high is about where you'd want to have it to, to work the most uh, easily on the crop, picking the fruit, uh, managing the crop. Working for so, people handling right. that and dealing with it. This is still better than being on the ground. <laughs> well, yeah, but, anything's probably better than being down on the ground. But yeah, it would be uh, a couple feet higher. It would be more ideal. Okay, and that's you could. It would be the same setup we see here. You're just bringing the chains up, exactly up higher. So when we start here, a little bit like what we talked about with the last system, you can actually take these, fill them with your substrate, and then plant. Well, how do you do that? Right. So you, you can. Uh, it, the easiest just to have a central planting location. Uh, you can fill your bucket. Um, we put the plants in similarly to the, 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 the styrofoam trough. We put them in at an angle so that they're leaning over the edge to get that initial fruit truss over the edge. Um, so pretty much the same except we have segmented pieces that we're planting at a time. Now I see that in this then you filled it, you have brought it back, you've leaned the plants out. We've again got that correct planting depth we talked about in the previous system. Everything still applies. But in this case now, you um, you have three drip lines that are going. This drip line, this is the traditional way you deliver nutrient solution to a hydroponic crop like a tomato or a cucumber or something in a slab or in a pot even. And I did that just because um, it seemed to be a little more appropriate for this system rather than because of the way it's suspended. Also, if I put a continuous irrigation line down this entire section, I, I could never remove one of these uh, buckets if I if I chose to. So right. having the individual lines to the individual plants is actually a very traditional way to irrigate a hydroponic crop. Well you also have gaps between the buckets here a little bit. Well these gaps um, in this trough were so that we could achieve a specific planting density. Uh -huh. um, we have other troughs that are that are, are just you know bucket to bucket. So a grower could put those bucket to bucket. They would, they, they would put them bucket okay. to bucket. We, we were just trying to achieve a, a treatment uh, for the particular tests that we were doing. So ours have space. Now you mentioned that planting density. That was going to be my next question for you. I see here in this particular type of Beto strawberry bucket, again, not to be confused with the traditional bucket that we're actually going to see when we do some of our filming at the Arizona site. In this size, you've actually gone with three plants. Is that, or do you have a target density you would recommend? This bucket spacing with this plant spacing uh, identically replicates the spacing that we had in the continuous styrofoam trough. Okay. So that was why we, we had this arrangement so we could match that, that particular spacing. Uh, we went bucket to bucket with four plants to have a 50% uh, 
more dense spacing to see how that would go. So that the reason you see three plants in the spacing is so we could achieve the same density and compare directly to okay. that styrofoam trough. Now again, a grower probably puts these bucket to bucket and they could just treat this as one long trough or gutter or what have you. A grower is going to go spacing. bucket to bucket. They need to maximize their space utilization. Um, they're going to plant those buckets at the density that they want. Um, they could treat it as a, as a whole. The only difference is that you know the roots can only grow within this particular bucket, whereas in the continuous trough, the roots can grow through all the whole through the whole trough. So you've got them planted. Uh, you watered them in. You backfilled everything like what we talked about before. You've changed your drip tube, so the how you're supplying your fertigation solution, your fertilizer solution, or water has changed up a little bit here. Um, is that where this finishes now? Do you cover this in plastic like you did the other, or do you leave it? We covered this with a white mulch just uh, uh, in a similar way. Um, because of the, the hanging chains, um, we didn't use a continuous piece of, of panda plastic. We just cut sections, but we put it on basically the same way. That's a Two different systems here, many similarities, but slightly different. Uh, with the, the long connected trough or gutter, single piece, and then these types of uh, Dutch or Beto, I should say Beto, we don't want to confuse people, Beto strawberry, strawberry buckets. Trough. And it'll be nice then actually for growers to be able to see the Beto strawberry bucket versus the traditional and some of these other systems that we're doing out in Fayetteville in some of the future videos. Mm -hmm.